Hi, and thank you for joining me. My name is Tanya, and I'm the Holistic Health Practitioner here at Critical Bench. And today what I want to talk very briefly about with you is the top 10 warning signs for Alzheimer's disease. Alright, if you have watched any of my previous or other Alzheimer's videos, you do know that this is a topic that's quite near and dear to me. It hits really close to home. And so this video, I just want to very quickly go through what the top 10 warning signs are for Alzheimer's. However, what I do want to say to you is that the video and the, the, 10, the top 10 that I'm about to share with you are not meant to throw you into a panic. Um, I do believe it's worthwhile reminding yourself that as we get older, some things just aren't as... Um, accurate as they were in our 20s and our 30s, right? We, you know, we have a lot more going on too with jobs and families and, and just as we get older and go into our senior years or as loved ones of ours go into their senior years, memory isn't always as quick um, as it used to be. So these are, again, top 10 warning signs and really what the message here is for you is if you're concerned for yourself, if you have a concern for a loved one and you feel like after hearing these that you're ticking a lot of the boxes, then it probably warrants a visit to your family doctor for further investigation. Because sometimes it could be something else completely unrelated, it can be due to another issue. But again, it's a checklist. It's a step one in terms of, you know, something doesn't seem right, something doesn't feel right. I have these concerns. If you feel like you're checking a lot of the boxes, then rather than get panicky, rather than become very down or worried or scared, then go see your doctor and discuss with him because chances are it might be something completely, completely different, all right? So what are the top 10 warning signs? Well, one obviously is memory loss, but very significant memory loss that actually disrupts daily life. So we all have lapses in memory. <laughs> I have them frequently. Again, lot, a lot is going on in a day and sometimes a lot is going on in just an hour so um, sometimes memory loss has just some ha has more to do with the fact that there's so much going on in your head that it can become challenging to pull out specific pieces if you need them however if you are finding that whether it's yourself or someone that you that you know a family member or a friend is experiencing significant memory loss and it is disruptive to their life that that is and can be a warning sign Another one is challenges with solving problems, but simple, simple problems that don't normally require a lot of extra help or a lot of extra thought. If these become incredibly challenging and cause a lot of anxiety, that can also be another warning sign. Um, warning sign number three, difficulty or very challenge in completing simple tasks. So maybe like getting dressed. Um, but very simple things that, again, wouldn't normally require help or assistance if they become so challenging that they do, that can be a warming, uh, a warning sign. Uh, number four, a significant confusion in recognizing or significant confusion with time and place. Again, that becomes very disruptive to daily life, um, can be another, another warning sign. Now, again, that can happen to any one of us at any given time, you know, you're in a new place, new surroundings, that can happen. But if it is happening in a way that causes warning, warning signs or red flags to go up, then it's worth checking the box and, you know, maybe looking further into that. Number five, trouble um, understanding or interpreting visual images and spatial relationship. If that becomes, um, really confusing to the point of causing anxiety, that is another, another warning sign. Another one, number six, is a significant problem in finding words when talking. Now again, I am one of the most tongue-tied people that I know. Um, since, since working here, I do a lot of videos, I'm on camera a lot of the time, and I can't tell you the number of times I have to redo a shoot like redo we have to refilm a certain like you know four or five sentences because I get all tongue-tied and I forget what I was gonna say or I can't find the words um, so you know stressful situations can can make us all tongue-tied again a lot going on in in the space of a day an hour or in our workplace lots of stress all of those can impact um, that kind of confusion and, and tongue-tiedness but 
if it is something that you're noticing more as a pattern and it's you know it's it's quite extreme quite significant quite pronounced then again it's worth it's worth mentioning to a family doctor if you, it's also being experienced along with many of these other warning signs all right number seven uh, misplacing things and an in a but combined with the inability to retrace steps so human beings we are largely creatures of habit we get into these patterns for example have you ever been driving down the road going to work okay and you take the same route every single day and you have for maybe 15 20 years and have you ever been driving and all of a sudden you're at a stoplight or a stop sign or somewhere and you think the last 10 15 seconds of driving I don't even remember it <laughs> okay we just our brains can go into autopilot because we do become very routine with certain things. We become very ritualistic in patterns of behavior, walking in the door, setting the keys on the table as soon as you walk in the door, throwing your jacket on the couch, whatever these are that can become very patternistic that we don't even think about them. We're just moving through the actions of doing them. Um, so with that, a lot of times if, um, you know, you can't, where did I put my keys? There's, it's not where I normally put them, but you can think, well, when I came in the door, the dog ran out, so I dropped the keys on the floor because I ran to get the dog. We're, most, most of the times we're able to retrace our steps and go backwards to find that, that thing that we're looking for. If that becomes extremely challenging, again, it, it does um, tick a box as a possible warning sign for Alzheimer's disease. Number eight. Um, is increasingly poor judgment and particularly with things that would normally things that a person would normally not do for example like safety risks you know um, just not thinking things through in a way that they would have normally for things like their safety other people's safety just making sure things are in place ready to go everything's looked after if there's an increasingly um, presentation of poor judgment, again, can be another warning sign. And again, not in and of itself, but combined with many or all of these other warning signs that I'm talking about with you today. Number nine is a significant withdrawal from social life and work life. If you find yourself or a person you care about really, really significantly withdrawing and really resisting engagement with other people, especially other people that they're from day to day always seem to have contact with. That can be now that can be a hard one to check the box, let's say, because perhaps there's something else going on in a person's life. They, be, they could be going through a rough time. They could have a lot on their mind. I mean, a lot of things can impact a person to the point where they just withdraw. So again, I really cannot impress upon you enough as I'm talking with you through these top 10 and sharing them with you, one of these alone does not warrant, um, you know, anxiety and concern for Alzheimer's disease. It's not, it's, not, it's not enough to make a diagnosis. But if several of these are very present, and again, very extreme, very significant, and very pronounced, it can indicate that, but does require further investigation. So when it comes to extreme social, like withdrawal from social work life, you know, human interaction and engagement, be very mindful of, is there something else going on, all right? Now the last one is extreme and significant changes in mood and personality. And when I say extreme, I really do mean extreme. I mean, if let's say, for example, you're concerned about your mother and your mother's a very quiet, very meek, very soft-spoken lady, and always has been in the entire time you've known her. She's been, you know, that type of personality, that type of woman, and all of a sudden, what you see, what you're experience, experiencing when with your mother is volatile outbursts, um, you know, harsh words, swearing, you know, inappropriate behavior, very, very outwardly, upsetting and drastically different personality um, the personality is just different in the way that they behave and, and, and drastic mood swings so again in and of itself that can indicate a lot of other things going on that definitely do warrant investigate further investigation by your doctor for their further doctor's visit but um, when you look at that if you are sitting there and you're thinking to yourself there's a lot of these warning signs that I can check off 
with respect to somebody that I'm concerned about, then my recommendation, I mean, I'm not a doctor, I can't diagnose, I won't diagnose, but I would, as someone that um, cares very much about how this disease is treated, how the people who are diagnosed with this disease are treated, making sure that you know the treatment and options and resources are out there. If you're sitting there finding and feeling like a lot of these top 10 warning signs are present in somebody that you know and care about, then it certainly would be well within reason and probably very wise to go and visit your family doctor, discuss the fact that, you know, this is what you see, this is what you're hearing, this is what you're experiencing, and look into it further. I want to thank you for watching this video today, and I hope it did help. And please share it with friends and family members that uh, you believe would get some value out of it. If you did like the video, I sure would appreciate your thumbs up. Any comments or questions, put them down below because I do read those and I will get back to you. Again, my name is Tanya. I'm the holistic health practitioner here at Critical Bench, wishing you a very happy and a very healthy day.